Hey guys, it's Monday. As you can tell, I finally got sick. Like, the worst of the worst. Not just exhaustion, but like, really, really bone deep weary. Um, so, on Saturday, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crochet. I don't know how much I can right now, but I'm going to crochet while I talk to you real quick. And then I'm going to show you what I got from the store, because I did go to Joanne's and Barnes and Noble real quick because I needed to get some um, um, some yarn so I can make more peeps and I had to get more stuffing from Joann's. So I went and I grabbed all of that and um, I wanted to make more chickens so I bought some yarn for that. Uh, so I didn't end up going on Saturday to Hobby Lobby. Reason being is because after I turned off my camera, I went and I visited my mom and my sister. My sister was not feeling well. But you guys could tell by the end of Saturday, I was sniffling. I was not feeling too hot. I was not feeling myself. So um, I only stayed for about 20, 30 minutes to visit my mom. And then I was on my way home. Didn't stop anywhere. I did grab myself something to eat. And I um, waited to eat until I got home. Well, I was almost home when I'm driving on the main road that takes me to my side street. It takes me up the hill to get to my house. And I'm side by side with this brown truck, you know, and uh, their lane, his lane, this, this brown truck, I'm assuming it was a dude because he had work stuff in the back of the truck. I mean, girls could have work stuff in the back of the truck, but you guys can already tell by my attitude, my behavior right now that this situation did not go well for me at all. Now I'm fine. I'm fine. My nerves were shot. It was going, we're, I'm, I'm a little ahead of this person, the, the brown truck next to me. And I noticed up ahead, there's four cars that had just stopped because the car in the front that had stopped the whole thing, the whole lane was turning left because there's houses right there. And the homie that was next to me was pro was not paying attention, but I started slowing down, okay? I, was, I started slowing down because sometimes you get people that pop out from the lane and, you know, they want to go in front of you because they don't want to wait. And they was waiting for a bit. Well, the truck was not braking. He was not braking. And, uh... He decided that my lane was the lane that he was going to go into because his truck almost head-on collided with the three cars or the four cars that was in front of him. It was it was three cars, I think, and then his was the fourth. I don't know, but it happened so fast. And near me on this side of the road is the open field, but the open field is where people do their dirt bikes. There's ditches, like deep, deep ditches. I've seen cars get stuck there before because it's like they jammed into the ditch. There's a bus stop there too, so there's a bench with a pole. I had no choice but to go into the ditch. Um, now my back was hurting a little bit already before driving home. So I was thankful that Eva and Sophie stayed to help me. And... Um, it was so scary, guys. For a second there, I my wheels lifted off the floor and I thought I was going to flip. And there's always people walking on this path because there's a there's a cutout path where people park because there's no sidewalk. There's no sidewalk and there's a farm down the way. So they take their horses and then they, you know, they walk because it's it's a farm. It's a rural area. It's a farm area where, where we at. And I was like, dude. This can't be happening. Not again. I don't need another life altering event. And earlier in the week, you guys know, last Friday when I posted my weekly vlog video, I was trapped behind a perimeter line where police officers had to take out their weapons. Like I called my husband. I was like, sit in there because my instincts kicked in when it comes to driving. 
I had to go into the field because he literally did this. I didn't have time to honk. I didn't have time to say anything. I was so quiet. I was playing praise and worship, listening to, you know, the gospel. And I was just like, okay, well, praise the Lord that I was listening to Jesus. Because if I wasn't listening to Jesus <laughs> and everything inside of me wanted to like race after homie and be like, what the heck is your problem, man? You almost, you almost took me out, you know, and I had to go into this field where it was all bumpy. I was being like bounced and jostled around before I was able to like slow my car down and it was right in front of the bench where people sit for the bus stop telling you guys y'all it's just it, it's been a crazy week for me an eventful one and my nerves are shot and then yesterday after church we did um bagel and meet and greet because they just finished um, redoing the courtyard and they wanted a giant fellowship area for people to just really fellowship and sit and talk, you know? And so last week they had a cereal mingle and this week they had a bagel special. So we're sitting there and then I had forgotten my phone in the car and I was like, during service, I was like, you know what? I don't need it. Cause I normally use my phone as I'm listening to pastor Brian speak. And, um, I, I have the Bible app open, you know, but this time I forgot my phone. And then when I sat down after church, we all had a bagel, me and the kids were sitting there. And I was like, um, when we first sat down in service, I was like, oh, I need to check something on my Instagram. And uh, I was like, that's when I realized I didn't have my phone. So when I sat down after I grabbed my phone from the car, my husband was talking to a friend. I was sitting with the kids. I started to not feel good at all. Like I was just like, man, I just, I really want to go home. I opened my Instagram. The first thing I see is my friend Rianne and her, our friends that live in Vegas that we go visit once in a while. Daniel had passed away. Our friend Daniel had passed away. He'd been battling cancer for the last 20, 15, 20 years. And he finally has peace and he went to heaven. It's so sad, but you know what? He's not suffering anymore. And we found out last week that my, my husband's uncle passed away as well. So it, it's been, <laughs> it's been eventful this week, you guys, but I am just sitting here trying to feel better. Um, I, I can't take medication until about two o'clock cause my, I don't, I've told you guys before this before, but I'll reiterate it. My levothyroxine medication that I take for my thyroid it won't allow me, I have to wait five hours before I can take it. And then I was supposed to go today to go get my thyroid blood work done so that next week or in two weeks, I can go to my doctor's appointment and they can see that my levels are fine. And then they'll uh, re-prescribe me my medication for another year. Well, if I'm sick, they won't take my blood. So I'm having like a severe allergy, head cold the wooziness and everything, but I went out this morning to go and purchase stuff at Hobby Lobby and Joann's. I actually stopped at Walmart first and I got these baskets are what I really wanted to get originally instead of the baskets that I do have. Um, but the only thing is that they don't come in blue. So I'm really bummed out about that, but I can always go to, you know, uh, Dollar Tree and get me a blue basket. It's going to have a movable handle or yeah, handle, but that's all right. So I got four pink, yellow, green, and blue. I mean, purple. I can, I mean, I can always spray paint it, but what's the point in that? <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm a little, you know, sad my friend passed away, but I, I'm praise the Lord. He's at peace. You know, my friend Rianne and their daughter Mila, they're they're doing all right. So um, we're just waiting to find out services and stuff like that. Because it was just, you know, just happened yesterday. So, But if you guys could just, you know, keep the whole family in prayer and friends. Well, I came home yesterday. I found the bags because Eva brought me bags. And um, I'm going to use them for the big baskets. Those ones work for this these baskets because they're high enough they're tall enough 
but these ones work for the ones that I purchased. I don't know. Let's open them up. So I purchased these online, but they didn't come in time. And I wanted to have, oh yes. They're big enough. Look at that. They're wide enough. Oh yeah, for sure. Check it out. My baskets will fit in here. So um, they're not going to be, it's not going to be tall enough for, um, for these. Because once, it opens up and it flattens down, it shrinks down, you know, it levels out and it won't close on the top. So, but these ones work better for the, the best for the other one, the other baskets. So, um, the ones that Eva got me and my sister got me, my sister got me some too, but she got me printed ones. That's okay. I'm going to use them for the kids for Easter. Um, it worked pretty well. It'll work pretty well for the other one. So, but, um, I wanted to see if my nieces and nephews would want a peep, you know, make them their favorite color peep or something for Easter because we do Easter baskets for everybody. So, um, that was, that was Amazon. And then I showed you the, um, these baskets and then from Walmart and then, uh, these are the confetti bags that my sister got me from Dollar Tree because she works at Dollar Tree. So they, she grabbed these for me. So I'm going to use these. There's two in each. So I have four of them, which is good because um, I have five nieces and nephews. So I'll just use a clear bag that Eva gave me for that. Okay. So next I went... Oh, and also at... Oops. Sorry, guys. I'm all... Like, look, I have no product in my hair. I just put my hat on and run out the door. When you're not feeling too hot, you don't feel like doing squats. So <laughs> you don't want to put your hair up. I'm like, I could have found my beanie, my Pam beanie, beanie. So I, um, I don't know where that went. I think it's in a bag in the garage that the boys grabbed for me. But when I came home after being run off the road, like literally I drove seven minutes and I was home. My oldest comes out and he was like, hey, mom. And I'm like, and he goes, what happened? I told him, ooh, he was so mad. Let me tell you, teenage boys and they mamas don't want, you don't want to mess with that. That boy was hot. He was angry. He said some choice words that I let slide for the moment. He held me and then my younger baby boy came and he was just like, what happened? And my oldest told him. They were mad. It was just, it, it was in the moment. Um, all right. So, and also at Walmart, I bought more watercolor ombre or mandala ombre. Remember I said last time, ombre, you got your ombre, I got my ombre. <laughs> Even when I'm not feeling good, I have to joke. I want to watch Smallville right now, but I'm watching YouTube booktube videos. Because tomorrow, somebody requested that I do a fourth wing uh, book review. So Tuesday, I'm going to be doing that. So if you, uh, I think it was Katrina or Rita. I think it was Rita. Rita requested it. So I'm not sure if I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I apologize. But I got this one. This one's called Harmony in blue, but they only had one. So I think I have this in blue. If not, I'm going to go back next week and I'm going to get in blue because this is what I use to make my, um, um, Friday score shawls. You guys, I seriously want to lie down. I don't, I'm, I'm just like, but I only have a little bit, not a little bit. I have a lot, but, and then I bought, um, happy. I bought it in happy because this one sold pretty quick. I'm not, I used to be one of the ones where I had to have the same center pole, but now I don't. Um, now I try to get the same, like you could see it's blue right here and then it's pink on the outside, but you could see that the blue's right here and then it transitions into red and then the, the fuchsia right here. See that? Well, I tend to try and get the center to be the last color from the outside. So it's a smooth transition from the last color you used to, you know, so I know that the inside of this one has all blue. So it's going to transition really well from that to this. So I'm excited. But the inside, because the inside of this is blue. You could see the blue in here. 
and um, and then it starts with that red. So if it ends with the red right here and it starts with the blue here, perfect. Okay, that's all I got at um, Walmart, and then I headed to Joann's. And uh, I only got a few things at Joann's, seriously, but this is the main thing I got, dude. You guys, you know me and my Joann bags. I got to get me one. And I didn't see this last time I was there. I was like, I had to get this. It's clear heart, cut out, love. And my mom was like, Miha, I told her that I had gotten socks because I saw these peep socks. And I was like, I got to get me the peep socks because... I don't have any Easter peep socks, and I found this. She was like, get me a pair. So I got my mom a pair of peep socks from Joann's. They were $5.99 and 40% off. So they were like a little, like $3.25, $3.50, $3.45, somewhere around that price range. So I got two of these. And then I got Brene Baby Blanket Speckle because I saw Rose grab these in her last video. And she was like, go get them. I was like, I'm getting on it. So I got on it, Rose. I got these. Uh, super soft. I'm going to make some um, maple chickens with this. And that reminds me because I'm supposed to print out. I purchased, I think, like 10 patterns over the weekend of nothing but amigurumi. And these are like pillows, guys. I'm just like, oh, yeah. Let's get some rest right now. <laughs> But um, they didn't have the yarn that I wanted. They were like, oh, it's on its way. It's on the truck. And I was like, you you say you have eight in this one and four in this one, but there's nothing on the shelves. And she was like, yeah, the four that was there and the one that I wanted, this one is called Sandy Tweed and the other one was called Sandalwood. And I was like, man, I wanted the Sandalwood because it's got like this cream base with these brown and orange and burnt brick flex on it yeah they didn't have it somebody purchased the last four online oh, that's airplane it sounded like somebody was opening the garage again i was like "Ooh, i got a bat right here pull and some pent-up aggression i better watch out <laughs> okay so after I went to Joann's, I went to Hobby Lobby, and I grabbed, I saw these, and I was like, I'm going to put these in my baby's gift basket, or baskets, so they have the, these miniature cotton, um, cotton candy, cotton, so just, I needed eight, and there's, looks like there's ten in here, yeah, there's ten in here, so they were $5.99, and it was 40% off of all things Easter, so I got these for like three bucks, you guys. So I was like, yes, sir, I will take those. Thank you. <laughs> so that's going in the Easter candy closet. And then you guys know I love peeps. Okay. I love, love, love peeps. They're my favorite thing for Easter. I saw this for my baby girl. I had to get it. It's a bow. And then I thought about it after I went, I left and I was just like, what if they have peeps ribbon? And I didn't take the opportunity to go check it out. And I could have crocheted a tiny little peep and put it in the middle there. But man, it was 40% off of $6.49. And I just grabbed it because it's for my daughter. I, she has her little Easter dress already. This is going to be a long Monday vlog, you guys. Okay. And of course, I'm working on another Wild Lily Energy scarf right here. All right. More. That's not it. Okay. I didn't just get that from Hobby Lobby. I had this wild and crazy idea. This is all yarn, by the way. <laughs> this giant bag is all full of yarn. I went and grabbed all the colors I said I was going to grab. So you guys know my keychain lip balm holders and the lip balms that I buy from Wildcat Farms. Okay. I saw these baskets and I was like, I have to get these and put my keychain lip balm holders and my, my the lip balms that I purchased in this. Make it a little basket. And then I saw these tiny little foam Easter eggs. They're glitter eggs. Hold on. Somebody's trying to call me. It's a scam likely. You ain't getting a pickup. Better just keep going on by. <laughs> so I'm just going to put like one or two eggs in there. And then, isn't this cute? Tell me this is not cute. I love this. So 
Man, I just like miniature stuff. So there's six in here. On next Saturday, I'm going to go buy more lip balms. And then I'm going to make these. Because I do have them at the market. And I have bags that I can use for this. Oh, I'm so excited. This is just... I would break out in song and dance if I wasn't so out of energy right now. <laughs> Alright, so um, I have... I was looking for... Or like I told you guys, I went back and I bought... I went to uh, yesterday. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Saturday, I tried to go to Hobby Lobby, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to go home. I'm starting to feel a headache coming on. And then uh, the running off the road happened. And I was just like, I'm not leaving. And then I realized, you know, I might as well go to Barnes and or Hobby Lobby on Monday because I have... The, the the 30 percent off starts on this monday for the yard so i was like you know i'm gonna go so i went today and i grabbed two stains of this tweed that's ivory tweed i got this because i need to finish my perfect pocket shawl that i made in this one and um i remembered when first when we left to vegas i was i was working on it and bef the morning we left to vegas for my cousin's birthday party I had been drinking a cup of cranberry juice and it was sitting next to my bed. I had fallen asleep, left the cup there. <sighs> Dropped the entire cup in my bin that was next to my bed full of yarn. And this last skein that I was going to use to work up that perfect pocket shawl was in there and that's how come I was short. I was like, no, I, I had an extra one and I remembered. Well, um, it was soaked through. I rinsed it out. I tried to dry it, but it would not dry. So I just tossed it and I, cause I was like, mm, it's gonna grow mold. I'm not gonna work. I don't wanna work with that. So sorry if the lighting keeps going up and down, the sun keeps playing peekaboo because it's supposed to rain today around two or three. So I got two more just in case because I think I'm going to be making, because I got to do the tassels and I'm going to be making a matching beanie to go with it. So here we go. <laughs> um, so I told you guys that I wanted to buy more of that velvet yarn from Hobby Lobby so I can make different color leggy froggies. Well, I was there at Barnes and Noble. I mean, I keep saying Barnes and Noble. It's because... I'm, I wanted to go to Barnes and Noble so bad to buy a book today because I had enough money and I wanted to treat myself. And I was just like, you know what? No, I'm going to go home because I know if I go to Barnes and Noble, I'm going to be sitting there forever with a matcha la frappuccino and reading a book and just chilling and not do anything until my kids get out of school. And I really needed to finish editing my video, which I probably should have so I could finish editing my video and then I could have just sat in my car in front of my kids school and did this showed you guys this I should have but I wanted to come home I wanted to lie down my head really really is hurting oh um I forgot Joann's I also bought more stuffing so I bought more stuffing for Joann's and then um I bought, it's called Adora Ball. This one is called Sugar Plum Plum. So I was standing there looking at the Sugar Plum or um, Adora Ball yarn by Yarn Bee. And I was like, you know what? I was only going to get one of each. So I can make, because I, I can get like four, four and a half, maybe five leggy froggies out of each one of these uh, skeins of yarn. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to get two because I want to make miniature size peeps you know my giant ones I want to make miniature ones so I got two of each color so I got purple I got yellow I got two pink where's the other people here this two pink I got two blues and this is called baby's blue pink one's called pinkaboo and the yellow one's called bumblebee wings and then, of course, I got the green one called Mint Charm. Okay, now, if you guys want to know the specs, it's 92 yards. 
um, 85 meters, 100 grams, 3.5 ounces. You can use a 9 millimeter crochet hook, 8 millimeter knitting needles. It's a 5 bulky, but it's not a 5 bulky, okay? It's more like a 4 or 3, bulky 3. Um, it's 100% polyester. Uh, you can wash it, just don't dry or iron or bleach it. Yep. It's 3.5 ounces. I told you guys that. It's called Mint Charm. Um, it's made in Turkey. Oklahoma City. So I got two of each color that they had there. And I wanted to make a big peep. A giant peep. But it they didn't have the one color that I wanted. So I saw this. These are a little bit more expensive. $6.99. So I'm probably going to make a peep out of this and then give it to my, my daughter. Uh, for Easter, put in her basket because she was like, I want a bunny, but I wanted rainbow colors. So this was called Cozy with a Twist, and it's called Summer Strawberry. It was $6.99, 30% off, 66 yards, 5 ounces. Um, let's see. I'll show you that one in it. It's a 9mm knitting needles, 9mm crochet hooks, 142 yards. Um, it says this is 6 bulky. I would say yeah. Maybe, I, no, I take it back. I'd be like a five bulky, 100% recycled polyester. So you can wash it, but lay flat to dry. Don't, don't dry it in the dryer. Don't iron it. Don't bleach it. And what is this? Some, somebody told me that that was bleach, but what is that one now? Okay. Don't use a blow dryer. I don't know. Okay, so those two I got. And then the last but not least, I got a bunch of cotton because I'm going to be making Cup Cozy for my Easter mason jars that I showed you guys I got the candy for last Friday when I did another haul. So I got this, and it's um, Crafter Secret. I got Spa Blue. Let's see. That's the right color right there. That's the color. I got this one, Flex kind of coloring it's called extra sprinkles I got this light lavender or lilac one oh lavender and spring stripes now I, I wanted to get orange and green but I was just like I think I have those at home this one is just a yellow it's like a pale yellow this one's dark teal And just a purple, purple color. So I got two different shades of purple. I have a bag right here. I'm tossing all the rest of the yarn in. But that's it that I got on my Monday trip. Look at it, it's already 30 minutes. Hopefully I can cut that down short. <laughs> but um, that's it for my Monday, you guys. I'll see you um, tomorrow. I'm going to lie down right now. I have about an hour before I got to go pick up my kids. So. I'm going to lie down take a little bit of a nap before I got to go pick them up. Today's going to be so easy for dinner. My husband, he purposely bought a um, one of those, you got to heat up pre-made lasagnas. I'm not a fan of making pre-made stuff. I like to make everything from scratch. So, but he was like, nope, I'm buying it. You're not feeling good. <laughs> Rest, like me and the kids take everything. So, thank you, Jesus. Or like my son, my oldest son was just like, mom, just go back to sleep because we can stay home and take care of you. I was like, no, you got to go to school. He was like, who's going to take care of you then? I was like, buddy, moms, nobody takes care of moms. <laughs> you know, I mean, my husband, when he comes home, he'll make sure he takes care of everything so that I can just chill. But while he's gone, I mean, I, I had to go to Walmart today because we forgot to buy toilet paper. And then when we got home, my kids told me, oh, mom, I forgot to tell you, we need a shampoo and conditioner. We need a body wash. So I had to go back and get some of that. So I also got a couple of things for their Easter baskets for my nieces and nephews too, but just small things. There were a dollar in the dollar section. Paper airplanes, like rebuildable airplanes. And some, you know, those push button air ring things that you toss. Those are my favorite. I got them for my godson, my nephew. And I got them little bubbles. So, I mean, that's it. For Monday, guys, I'll see you tomorrow before it gets more than 30 minutes. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs>
Hey guys, it's Tuesday. I'm still not feeling good. I'm under the weather. But I got a request for um, a book review for Book Talk Tuesday. So I'm going to grin and bear it. <laughs> I wanted to lie down and chill, but I was just like, I'm not the lie down and chill kind. I just came back from a meeting at my kid's school because I had a meeting with the staff there for some things. And... Um, while I was waiting, I was working on a granny square shawl. So I'm going to do this right now. I'm going to talk to you about the book that was requested. So Book Talk Tuesday, guys. Let's get into Fourth Wing. <laughs> now, somebody asked me, can you do, because I had asked you guys, you want to hear me talk about Book Talk Tuesdays? Do you want me to skip it? And people were like, no, we like to hear different, you know, things about books that you read. And somebody says, did you read Fourth Wing? I see it on your shelf. Can you do a book review? So we're going to leave Fourth Wing right. Let me see. I got new. <laughs> these are new. I'm going to put these up here. I got a new black one, too. Um, I'll put these right here in front of Jenny for, for right now. And then we'll put fourth ring right there. That way you guys can see it while I'm talking about it. So, um, if you haven't read this book or the, the series that is, uh, seemingly come, like coming out in the next, like completed in the next couple, over the next few years, it's going to be, um, it's called the Imperium series. So <clears throat> it is by Rebecca Yaros. She is a brand new, um, up and coming author. Um, as far as fantasy goes, however, she has done a ton of romance and it shows in her book. Uh, she has other books, other romance novels and it shows in her characters with um this book fourth wing it talks about a girl named violet soringale okay something is going on to the point to where in the beginning of the book she has been um a scribe sort of like a scholar somebody who studies books only the history of their race and the history of their um, their world. Okay. There's a ton of world building in this book. However, during the world building, you, you get the world building through the character as the character is being spoken about. I don't know how else to describe it. It's like you get the action and then the character will be like, it's not like, it's not unlike the experience that I had during this time. And and, or if she's crossing the parapet, which I'll talk about in a second, she starts to, um, ramble and think nonsense things, which is phrases from books that she's memorized as a scribe. Okay. So Violet, Violet Sorengale is a young girl. She has a particular, um, bone density disease where she breaks bones easily. She bruises easily. And, um, it's kind of, um, and it, it, it is a reflection of the author. The author does have this disease as well. And I can't remember what it's called. So somebody correct it or I'll flash it down right here. And I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible, you guys, because I tend to talk a lot. Um, and this book is just amazing. I love this book. It, she was supposed to be a scribe like her father, but and her brother, her older brother was supposed to be a scribe as well, but he decided to become a writer. And a writer is somebody who goes into battle. You go through a series of events and obstacles that you have to conquer through your studies um, when you go to the school. And they are meant to help you be stronger, be more... Um, uh, it's kind of like... American Ninja Warrior, but if you fall, there's no safety net. <laughs> you don't get to try again. You don't get to be like, oh, I fell. I didn't complete the course. I got to go back and do it again. No, no, no. There's no safety net. I'll leave it that, at that. So 
the she she was told by her mom because her mom was a writer but her dad passed away of a heart attack previously um because her brother had died in battle as well and her, her father's heart just couldn't take the sadness and he died well violet's mother lilith her name is lilith says my daughter is not going to be a scribe she is going to be a writer and she has another daughter so violet is the youngest she has an older brother and a an, an, an older sister and then it's her so the older sister is there battling with the mom saying do you really want her to go into battle do you really want to put her through that do you really want to lose another child and violet is overhearing this she's got her pack on and it's filled with like books because she loves to read filled with books and she can barely barely carry it on her back so that's her introduction to this new um area of the world that she lives in she's always been dedicated to books she knew about the other lifestyle because her mom her brother and her sister were all writers but her father was a scribe so she thought that that's what she was going to do nobody knew not even her scribe scholar leader who he was training her up to be the person that would take over for him when he retired knew that her mom wanted her to become a writer instead of a scholar and so he was just flabbergasted when he saw her so they have to cross this parapet it's kind of like I think of it as the um, the Linden Bridge. I think that's what it's called from Thor, the movie. The Eisen, Eisen Bridge. Eisen Bridge? It's, it's something. We'll flash it down here. I think of it as that, but it's more narrow. The weather is crazy. Now, each person, went, once they cross the parapet, that's what this bridge is called, if they survive it, once they cross the parapet, they go through and and it's a, like a battle of the wills it's basically hunger games after that you can catch people unaware you can even throw people off the parapet while you're crossing it just to make sure that you once you get to that point at the end of graduation your dragon is there and you get to pick your dragon and your dragon gets to pick you um so they have to go through these series of obstacles in order to get to graduation and it's called the crossing where you cross inside this um, meeting place where the dragons all stand and you walk through and it it has these dragons that stand there and if the dragon doesn't like you if he doesn't see that you're strong enough or if you have some sort of you know um uh, just thing that the dragon doesn't like he will fire upon you and you become ash after the first half of the book it's just her going through everything everything that she goes and then she there there's this group of kids that have this tattoo on them and they're part of the rebellion the rebellion that was against because this city that they live in is the most flourishing of cities the best way that I can describe it is Rhea. If you've seen the movie Rhea, you know how in um, in Rhea's kingdom, they're flourishing. They have the best water, the best food. And then when they invite the rest of the kingdoms, tail, heart, you know, wing, fang, when they come together, everybody's complaining that heart has the best you guys can tell that I love dragons, so anything dragons I watch, and Rhea has dragons, so Sisu is my favorite, because she's a rainbow dragon, she's so cool, and she's a, you know, she's the hope, the faith of it all, so it's like that within these walls of this world, where their kingdom, Violet's kingdom, and her mom, Lilith, is the general, so she can't say no to that, right, so the kingdom that Lilith lives in is the heart of everything like it's nourished it's flourishing and all the other people are calling and asking for help and at one point violet intercepts a letter and is like what the heck is this about well she's paired with these rebels these rebels that were a part 
of this group that wanted to, um, they wanted to do something kind of like a Robin Hood effect to where they take and then they give to the poor. So that didn't happen. And in retaliation to that, the general Lilith and the king of, or the, the president, I guess you would say of the kingdom, he killed all the parents and he made all the children join this group. So the children to the rebels that were sacrificed because they were in a rebellion and there's this boy named Zayden. He is part of the rebellion. Well, it turns out he has a bunch of secrets. He doesn't want to get close to anybody and he does the unthinkable. And when, um, Violet goes, there's this one particular boy that hates her and wants her just gone. He's been trying to get her and, you know, um, decease her life. <laughs> and he's been trying and trying and trying. And so basically the whole book is just Violet's survival with this bone disease. And she's got to wrap and brace her arm and there's healers there so they get to heal her. And this one particular healer has always healed her. And he was in the school, the academy where everybody's learning. So these rebels kids are forced to go across the parapet to join these games and to get a dragon. So they're forced to be warriors and stuff. And they have to go through all of this. And um, there's a rule that you can't be in a gathering of rebellions of three or more people and without another outsider. So if, if Violet was with Zayden and two other rebellions, that would be allowed. But if three rebellions were together or three rebels were together, um, that would be illegal. And that would be calls for, you guessed it, no net, <laughs> no net. So it, it's just, you know, she finds her dragon and then she realizes that, you know, there's more to this because I know I'm going to run in circles. I'm trying my best not to give too many spoilers away, but if you haven't read it, if you want to read it. So Violet is basically, in my point of view, starts to become a pawn in all of this scheming. Her mother is hiding so many things. The scholars that she went to school with are now there volunteering with books and stuff to help the, the writers learn their lessons. So there's a library there and she goes and scholars aren't allowed to hug. They're not allowed to, you know, um, smile or laugh. They're just there to learn and develop and educate their mind, which I think is so sad. <laughs> That's like the worst part. You know, and so she goes and she tries to study up on more things. She finds more things out. And it has to do with the rebels and this boy, Zayden, who his, his parents were cruelly um, taken out in front of him by her mom. And then in order, uh, there's a secret there that he explains at the um, end of the fourth wing or at the beginning of Iron Flame. Now... I have read both books. I ha I don't have the physical Iron Flame copy. It's like 30 bucks, you guys. I'm just waiting for it to come down in price so I can buy it. <laughs> so the, the gist of it is, is that she finds her dragon. But it's so crazy because when she goes, the kid that wants to take her out that has like this un- like unwarranted, but I guess if you take her out, you find favor, you know, because she is the general's daughter. So she is constantly being challenged all the time. So it, the challenges is kind of like divergent for when, um, Brees goes into, if you guys seen the movies, goes and she jumps, right? If that's like the parapet. She jumps and she gets caught by a net, but except if you fall off the parapet, there's no net. So she jumps and she finds six or four and they go through a series of trials that they got to get through. And Tris is constantly 
being challenged by this one guy that just hates her, right? Um, so it's kind of like that with Violet and this one particular guy. He constantly is trying to take her out. He's constantly like berating her, um, tripping her, knowing that she has this bone density disease and um, she's always being injured and she's like, I don't want to go to the infirmary no more. Well, Zayden takes it upon himself that during the time where they have to be, okay, so dragons, there's this huge cropping area, okay? It's just like this giant forest where all the dragons sit. You have to go through that whole forest to find your one dragon. Now you can run into people that would want to um, harm you, take you out, you know, hurt you because they want to get the best, the largest dragon. Well, there's this one golden dragon that, you know, everybody is just like, it's so small. It's so tiny. They don't, she doesn't deserve to be here. So the bad guy that wants to hurt Violet, he goes into there and he wants to, um, uh, find that dragon and take that dragon out because it's too small and scrawny. So she ends up saving the dragon and I will let you guys finish the rest if you want to read the rest of the book, but it is just an amazing book. And I hope that you guys find it as interesting as I did. And I don't, I'm just going to give you the, the larger, more beginning portion of the book because it's just, it blows you away. It takes your breath away. It's so suspenseful. It keeps you on your toes and it keeps your mind reeling. But for me, I went to school to be an investigator, to be a crime scene investigator. So I've taken criminology, sociology, I've taken psychology, and I've, I had to watch a ton of video interviews. I've had to solve cases that were already solved that we didn't even know about that were solved and crimes that we that were committed that we didn't even know about we investigated a serial um take her outer and um we we had to solve it you know because they keep some things under wraps so for educational purposes during my schooling we had to figure out what happened with this serial take her outer and so i um, I have that educational background. I have more books than this in my garage in another shelf with nothing but criminal books. In fact, I think I have a couple of them in here, <laughs> but I've taken all the ologies. So it's hard for me not to dive deep and try and figure out the, the plot. And most times than not, I figure the plot out. And with this one, I inevitably did because they're after reading so many crime books, after reading so many books with this type of genre, you tend to be like, and then you're right. And my, my, my book bestie, um, Ivana, she had read this book before me. She was like, you got to read, you got to read. And so I said, fine. I broke down, I cracked down and I, I, I sat and I read the book and I read it you know, being a mom and with my business and everything, you know, having to be gone for the weekends for a market, I read it in three days. Um, but I'm pretty sure if I was locked in a room for 24 hours or maybe 12, I could have knocked that out, you know, and maybe six to eight hours with no interruptions. But you, you start to starve for that. And it was such a good book. You guys, it was such a good book. Now I'm, I'm going crazy because yesterday was a 30 minute vlog. Today is a 20 minute vlog. So that is going to be it. That is my fourth wing take. That is a little bit, that's just the beginning of the book. You guys, that's just the beginning, like the first several chapters of this book that I gave you. You have, you want to learn more about it. It's got dragons. It's got just plot twist after plot twist you go on a roller coaster so you don't even realize there's a turn coming until the turn is right there in front of you and you have no time to prepare for it so i'm telling you guys if you haven't read fourth ring if you're a big fantasy reader and you like this then you guys want to go ahead and pick up fourth wing i do 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 i'm i cannot wait we just found out that they the publishers to fourth wing um just announced that there's going to be another third book coming out 
Now, it is in just Violet's point of view. It's not in Zayden's or in anybody else, Lilith's, her mother or her, her sister. There are entries from her brother's journal that her sister gives her that got her sister through her um, academy. So there are entries in here and same for Iron Flame. So if you guys want to know about Iron Flame, let me know in the comment section down below if you did not like this book review and if you want me to take the book reviews out or just give you a hint of what I've been reading lately because I don't know, for me, crocheting and reading go hand in hand. Whenever I got in trouble, I would uh, be grounded and go to my room, which was often because ADHD kids just have no limit of, you know, trouble. <laughs> I would have to be grounded in my room and I would read, just read, read, read. So I've been reading since like third, fourth, you know, geez, novels, Babysitter's Club in the third grade. That was my main thing. And then when I got to junior high, it was R.L. Stein. And then high school, I graduated to Mary Higgins Clark. So yeah, I've been reading what feels like my entire life of just murder mystery and, um, just solving cases, solving crimes and things like that. And, um, I recently just got into fantasy when my oldest son was born. So it's only been like the last, or my daughter actually. So only the last 10 years, I'd say, uh, cause she'll be 10 this December, uh, that I have started with fantasy. And I gotta tell you guys, I try to stay away from the ones that have a little bit more um, spice than I care for. I'm not a spice kind of person. But if it has it in there, like Nicholas Sparks, it's a little tasteful. My friend Elizabeth Reyes, who has been passed now for almost a year, she has very tasteful books when it comes to romance. And I got to tell you, I love, 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 love fantasy. Fourth Wing is it for me. And... If you guys, you guys, I have read all of Sarah J. Mass's books. Uh, you guys see back here, I've read all the Twilight books. I've read the Crescent City books, or not the Crescent City that you guys, or, you know, the one by um, Marissa Myers with um, Cinder. I've read all of the Cassandra Clare books, which are the Nephilim books, uh, the Mortal Instruments, I should say. I've read all, like, 28 of those. That is a bigger bigger book collection. There's like 20 something books. Okay. in the entire mortal instrument series in the Sarah J mass series, I haven't read the last three books, which are, um, let's see the Crescent is the two Crescent city ones, but, um, yeah, you guys pick up your copy of fourth wing, order it on your Kindle or your nook or your Barnes and Noble app, order it on audio. If you guys work, you know, it is such a good read. It is, it really truly is. But you guys, that is it for me on Tuesday. I'm going to lie down. This probably Friday video is going to be longer than I really want it to be. But all right, I'm going to go lie down. I'm going to chill out and just rest until my kids get out of school. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, it's Wednesday, so I just finished my Justice Matters video for Wednesday, and now I gotta go edit it. And you know what the darn thing is? I feel like I have to re-record it because I felt rushed, I felt so disorganized, and I felt like I was repeating myself, so I think I might have to re-record that. I kept sneezing, my nose is super itchy, I'm still under the weather. So my focus isn't that great and the lighting is horrible in my room right now, but I just don't want to stand up for too long. I'm still woozy and I have to leave in a few minutes to go take my son to school because it's Wednesday, late arrival. Um, but I got through the video. So it's whip Wednesday, you guys. So I'm feeling a lot better than I have been feeling the last couple of days. Um, my heart is still heavy from the loss of our friend Daniel. This is him. He he was, you know, he was such a goofball. Him and Rhiannon, my friend Rhiannon, they, I was the photographer in their, for their wedding. If you guys didn't know, I used to be a photographer. <laughs> I 
I dabbled in a lot of things because I wanted to be a forensics technician, which is a forensic photographer. So I went to school for that and eventually to become a profiler. Um, uh, so, but anyways, I was a, I was the photographer for their wedding. I did Rhiannon's hair for her wedding and that was 22 years ago. They just celebrated their 22nd anniversary back in January. Their daughter Mila had just turned, I believe, 20, uh, the week before last and Dale and Daniel celebrated his birth into heaven on Sunday. <sighs> It's just been a long journey, you guys, and I think the stress of it all finally caught up to me, and I just kind of crashed on Sunday when we went to the Justice Matters seminar. It was so difficult to try and sit there and listen to everything. It was so hard. I just, at a few moments there, I just wanted to get up and run out because it was just so heart-wrenching, heart-heavy to listen to everything that was said. And my husband actually like put, like put his arm around me and he held me because it was just like, <laughs> oh man, but it was worth the listen. It was worth hearing and it was worth the recording. I did record the full seminar and, um, I gave it to my pastor's wife, Kelly, and she's going to distribute it to, there goes my alarm <laughs> at 15 minutes until I have to take my son. Um, but she's going to distribute it to our church members that wanted to be there, but couldn't be there. Um, there wasn't a lot of people, but I, I, I completely understand because as a parent who would want to hear about all the scary things that go on in this real world, but we can't continue to stay naive to certain things of this world, especially when it comes to our children. So I stuck it out and I sat there and I listened. Okay. Moving on to, um, Sorry, my head is still hurting with Wednesday. <laughs> I am finishing up a uh, Peeps Bunny. So I have to just do the ear and that's it. And then squeeze his little, <laughs> create a neck and then <laughs> the ears. That's so sad. <laughs> Poor bunny. And then put the ribbon around his neck and he's good to go. I already did the um, stress ball peep or not peep, but stress ball egg that I wanted to do. The reason why this is hanging out is because when you make the second ear, it creates a hole because there's a little hole. So I leave this out and I sew the hole closed. That's what I do. So that's one thing I'm trying to keep today's video short because Mondays was like 30 minutes long to yesterday. Tuesdays for book review was like 25 minutes long. So today's going to be a bit short. There is Another thing that I have to finish, I'm almost done, halfway is done with this one. There goes my hook. So I have to finish this perfect, perfect pocket shawl. I finally went and I got two more skeins of the tweed um, yarn to finish this one. So I'm going to have to adjust the lighting. It is, it, it's, it looks bright outside, but I know it's when the sun doesn't like me today. So we're going to adjust the lighting on our own. So I'm going to finish this perfect pocket shawl. The next thing that I started, yes, 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 I know, I know. Me and my wild oleander hooded scarves. <laughs> well, this is Gossamer. This is the Unforgettable Red Heart. It is so soft. I have four of these and I bought them with reason uh, to make a wild oleander hood scarf. Now you guys, I have been selling these like hotcakes. It is crazy ridiculous how fast these are flying off the shelves. I am so amazed because it hasn't even given me an opportunity to finish making my perfect pocket shawls. Now those should be priority because I only have one out there. And this lady that had come to the market on Saturday, she wanted that one. She wanted my last perfect pocket shawl. And I have two ponchos out there. Now, they're not very, but my ponchos aren't as popular, but I started out with like maybe five ponchos and I have one left. Then I made another one. So they're chilling out there. People like the big wearable pieces. So um, I made two more wild oleander hooded scarves. The first one you guys saw was the rainbow one, the pastel -y Easter rainbow one. And then I like this one. Now, um... Like I said, this one's called Gossamer, I believe. 
yep, Gossamer. And it is the Red Hearts Unforgettable. That's what you are. It is a medium four weight, six millimeter crochet hook, five millimeter knitting needles. You can wash it, you can dry it, don't iron it, don't bleach. Um, which is crazy. I didn't know that you can machine wash and dry this. Just don't iron it. You don't want it to go up in flames <laughs> or get stuck and fry on your iron. Every five minutes, my alarm's going to go off. I started this out. Probably not going to finish it this week. That is just an endeavor or something that I endeavored to do this week. But this week is difficult. Now, I do have two different shawls here that I plan on finishing because I only have two lightweight lace shawls out there. And every time I put a certain pattern like the treasure net shawl or the macaw wing shawl, that one's almost finished. I have it around here somewhere. Um, but this one is in summer nights as well. This one is called paradise. Uh, I have my flash Rose likes crochet stitch marker on this one. I'm, I'm every time she puts a superhero one up there, I'm, she texts me and she's like, Hey, I have this out. Do you want it? I'm like, yes. So she'll send me the link and I'll snatch it up because girl knows me. <laughs> Gosh, she's so sweet. When I posted my last video on Friday, when I was in the middle of that, um, standoff, she texted me. I just saw your video. Are you okay? I'm glad you're home and safe. Oh, that meant so much to me for her to reach out and be like, are you okay? So thank you, Rose. My nerves had been so shot the rest of the day. I was freaked out. Projectile weapons were drawn and I was just like freaking out. And then to get into that other accident on Saturday. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Okay. I don't want to get into a car right now, but I have to. So now my husband's like, hey, babe, are you home after dropping the kids off? Yes. He was like, no incidents? No. He's like, okay, just rest. But this is the treasure net shawl. I'm halfway done with this one. Um, I just have to have the energy to sit down because I, I bounce around between projects throughout the day. If I get bored with um, making one thing, I'll hop over and do another thing. So this is one thing that I am currently working on. Also currently working on this shawl right here. This is the Treasure Net Scarf. A Treasure Net Scarf. They're both by Miho Crochet, you guys. And I always link her down below in the in the um, description box because she is the person that I buy all my shawl patterns from. I do have other um, Etsy uh, shops that I do buy from, but she is my number one because I just... I love the way her shawls are so lacy and lightweight and thin looking. This is a scarf, so it's not supposed to be too long. So I'm at that point to where um, you count how many rows you're supposed to be at. I'm at that row marker where I can start doing the border and the edge and the same border and edge as the treasure net shawl. So I am getting ready to finish this one up and I can put that out there. And then I think I might even have enough to make a treasure net shawl. If not, start out with a treasure net shawl and then get a lace weight kind of like uh, white, you know, because if you guys see, this is another summer nights. It's sparkly. It's so beautiful. Look at that pastels. And I really do want to get this out there for Easter. So um, that is something that I'm also currently working on. Another and the last item that I'm working on right now is this that you guys saw me working on during my Justice Matters video on Wednesday earlier in the week. So I am working on a granny square shawl. Now I've been trying to knock these out because they don't take me too long to make and it takes two um, mandala cakes, mandala 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 i don't know how to say it um it takes two mandala cakes and this is an ombre but the the colorway i believe i showed told you guys this on monday the colorway is serene it's got like this really cute pink orange look at that isn't that gorgeous like that pink and orange i 
I grabbed it right away. So, and after this, I'm going to be making the tranquil one that has like the bright, you know, colors. So, um, but that is it for me on Wednesday, you guys. I will continue to work on this. I have to finish that bunny today. And then another five minute warning because I just need the warnings. <laughs> uh, today, I probably will set this aside because today I'm going to make, the, I'm going to finish the rest of this peep right here. My little one-eared peep. It's like somebody bit his ear off. Um, and then I'm going to make a purple one because I sold the purple one on Saturday at the market. And then I'm going to be working on leggy froggies and miniature uh, peeps with the leggy, with the yarn that I use for leggy froggies, which is the, um, uh, what is it called? yarn ball Amazeball, something like that, in Yarn Bee from Hobby Lobby. Sorry, my nose is itchy because uh, my allergies are going crazy. I'm, I have eczema around my nose, so when I have allergies, my nose just like... So I look like Rudolph the red Nose Reindeer because I keep... And there's fibers floating around, so forgive me, guys. So I'm going to be working on peeps and leggy froggies all day today. I don't know if I'm going to have enough eyes for all of that. I'm going to have to put another order... So that is it for me on Wednesday. Woohoo! I'm just under 15 minutes for this. And after I edit it, it'll probably be less. So, <laughs> all right, you guys, I will see you tomorrow. I'm going to go take my son to school. Come back and relax. <laughs> Peace out. Look, I don't think Leviathan is going to be a threat again. But Lex might. He's seen your abilities. He'll turn the world upside down. He'll Hey guys, good morning. It's Thursday. I am um, feeling exhausted today. So I'm just resting. I'm watching Smallville, as you can see. I got some um, uh, bunnies done yesterday. Well, just one and a half. And when I say that, I mean two half bunnies because I ran out of yarn for this one. But look at Look at this giant peep. I love it. I had bought in that Bernay um, blanket extra and I bought it in the neon colors. You guys, this is so soft and fluffy. Um, I have to finish this. I ran out of yarn, so I got to go back. But I'm not going anywhere today because I'm so tired. I'm exhausted. I just, I've been just uh chilling and then right now chilling watching Smallville and finishing up um I'm making after that giant peep this one is little so I'm I'm finishing up this second ear right now actually so I'll be done in a few minutes I was so energetic yesterday and I took advantage of it I was I woke up with a craving for uh, chile rellenos, so I went to the store, and I bought the poblamos. I bought everything that I needed, the eggs, everything I needed to make chile rellenos, and I made them. I made homemade beans. I was just in the mood for an authentic Mexican meal, you know, and. Um, I even made homemade salsa. I bought chips. My husband and boys just devoured the salsa and chips. <laughs> I bought two bags and there's less than half a bag of chips left from, you know, the boys eating them. So <laughs> I swear having three giant boys in the house or <laughs> my husband and my two sons just, uh, I have to, I feel like I have to buy food twice a week. It's ridiculous, especially my older son, Isaiah. He's almost 16 and he just eats me out of house and home. I woke up and had a craving. So I was in the kitchen almost for like half the day because if you guys have ever made chile rellenos from scratch, you know, they take time, especially like when you're beating the eggs and you have to wait for that consistent, that right, perfect consistency. But so, um, man, I was listening to an audio book and I started to get really tired by the end of the day. So I kind of ran myself to the ground yesterday making that. Um, but 
It's a cheap meal to make. It, <laughs> it really is a cheap meal to make. Um, I went this morning after I dropped my kids off and I was like, you know what? I want a donut. So I went to my local donut place down the way, grabbed a cinnamon swirl donut, some donut holes and a custard filled jelly donut. <laughs> And then I had an inkling for chocolate milk, so I went to the farm again down the way. And I got to tell you guys, every time I want chocolate milk, I go to the farm. You can't get chocolate milk from any other place. The donut shop that I went that I went to this morning had the the same farm brands uh, chocolate milk. The you know, Mexican market I went to down the way on the other end of um, my block. They had the same chocolate milk stocked in their refrigerator. You guys, the city that I live in lives off of this chocolate milk. <laughs> and every time I went in, somebody was buying at least two. This lady this morning, uh, she bought four. I bought a half a gallon. And yeah, I'm already halfway done with it. So today, that's all the update I guess I'm going to do right now after I finish this ear. I'm going to start on my leggy froggy, froggies in the multiple colors that I purchased. And then I'm going to start on my um, Peeps bunnies probably tomorrow. Or, you know, I don't know. I'm going to work it out to where I'm just going to do all in one day and see how far I can get. I'm just going to grab two skeins of yarn. One skein is going to be dedicated to Leggy Froggies. The other skein is just going to be dedicated to Peeps. And that's how I'm going to work it. So that is it for Thursday, you guys. It's a short login. I'm really tired. All I'm doing is just sitting down, crocheting, and watching Smallville. I was, I am like Ellen Richardson and Tom Welling in one Oh, man. And they're young in this one. It's just like, this is so cool because it's, you know, it's Tom Welling and it's Reacher, you know. I can't wait for that one movie to come out. What is it called? Um, Ungentlemanly Co Conduct or something like that with um, Henry Cavill and Ellen Richson. I cannot wait for that movie to come out. <laughs> I am so excited because... I don't know what it is, but they're all like five foot five. Okay, so Tom Welling is five five. I mean, not five five, six five. Okay, Tom Welling is six five foot. So is Ellen Richardson. Henry Cavill is six five. And my other guy that I just, I don't know. It's not like I, I'm in love with them or in lust with them or anything like that. It's just that I think it's the build because my husband is a bodybuilder and he's got like these wide shoulders and I was, you know, you guys know I was a sports athlete when I was younger. So that when we met, I didn't realize that there was this whole bodybuilding world. I mean, I used to watch strongman competitions when I was a teen and I would sit there and I'd be like, man, I wish I could lift all of that. But I'm five foot three. <laughs> I'm this tiny little thing. I can't <laughs> lift anything. You know, Z and Rose and Pam, they will all tell you, well, you really are tiny. We thought you were lying. No, I'm short. <laughs> I'm not tall, but my best friend, Liz, she's like six inches or maybe like five inches taller than I am, you know, and then my book bestie, Ivana, she's shorter than I am. She comes to like right here. Okay, so she's four nine. So I feel taller in some aspects and I'm the tallest in my of my sisters except for my baby sister she's taller than me so and and it's funny because she says she's 5'3 I'm like no I'm 5'3 she's like no you're 5'2 <laughs> so I think she's 5'4 and I I think she's like the tallest one in our family like entire family and you know of all the girls I think she's the tallest because we're short you know Mexican Indians are short <laughs> so um but yeah, all I need is a movie with Henry Cavill, Ellen Richardson, ding, 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 I got it. But I need a movie with Henry Cavill, Ellen Richardson, Tom Welling, and Chris Hemsworth. They all need to be in a movie together, and it needs to be an action-packed, thriller, mystery, like, I, I need them to be in the next Expendables movie. <laughs>
That's what I want. <laughs> Blood and gore and adrenaline rush chunky here. Like it needs to. Yeah, we need to have that. Let's petition for that. <laughs> but excuse me, guys, I need to lie down. I'm I have like a massive headache today. So this is probably going to be the only vlog that I have. I opened the windows just to do this vlog and my headache is progressively getting throbbier. And that's why I'm drinking the chocolate and I'm nibbling on my donuts. But um, that is going to be my vlog for today. Tomorrow I'm probably going to go to Joanne's to get the other bright lights. This is called bright lights. It's Bernay um, Blanket Extra and it's so soft. I am going to make myself one, but this is going to market on Saturday. And I just found out. I've been following the weather yesterday and today. <sighs> yesterday or Monday was 25%. Yesterday was 35%. Today is 65% chance of rain on Saturday. But I'm going to I'm gonna go. I'm just going to bring a table full of nothing but Easter stuff. And I'm going to go, you guys. I don't care if it's going to rain. I want to sit there. And I know I'm not feeling good. It's probably not going to be good for me if I'm not feeling good. Maybe I'll bring my, my husband or my oldest son with me. I don't know. But that is it for Thursday. I will see you guys tomorrow or maybe later on tonight to show you guys my update. Because I'm seriously just going to be lazy. I don't know if I'm going to even make dinner today because I'm so spent from yesterday. So, But all right, you guys. Hopefully, Lord willing, I'll see you guys in a bit. If not, see you tomorrow. Peace out. Hey guys, it's Friday. Um, as you can tell, I'm still not feeling well. <laughs> Friday, 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 Friday. Finally finished Friday. I'm going to be posting some amazing, cool stuff today. I can't believe with how I've been feeling, I got so much done. <laughs> I got what I wanted done. Um, I think me crocheting, though, helped me feel a lot better it would just gave me something to do and I can kind of just close my eyes or read a book or watch a show. And I did listen to like whooshing sounds to help my headache go away. Um, I'm the kind of person that if my kids are sick, I'm like, take this, take this, take this. But for me, it's just like, I don't want to take anything. My husband's like, did you take medicine? I'm like, no. And he's like, why not? And I was like, I don't need it. And he goes, it sounds like you do. But I'm feeling loads better today. Um, as you can see, I don't have my eyebrows done. My hair is not done. I am just unfashionable today. I just put my hair up in a ponytail and I was like, forget it. I'm just going to go put my beanie low over my brows because I barely have any now. Over the years, you tweeze them so much that they're just non-existent and I just don't feel like putting any effort into my appearance right now because I just am tired. I did go to Hobby Lobby and Joann's this morning. I bought stuff that Joann's, I did not buy anything at Hobby Lobby. I sat there in front of Joann's um, just waiting for it to open. I got there about 30 minutes early and um, just waiting for them to open. I just sat there and was editing my videos and I was just like, I wouldn't, I don't have much to edit. Well, I do. I had tons to edit. Monday's video was like 30 minutes. I had to break that down. Tuesday's video was like 25. I had to break that down. Wednesday was another long, maybe 15, 20 minute, broke that down. And Thursday was just maybe like 10 minutes. So, but Today's Friday and I'm about an hour and 20 minutes in. I finished editing and this video or this vlog Friday. I'm going to try to be short showing you finally finished items. But first, let me show you what I got at Joanne's. Now, my mom had called me when I was sitting in the parking lot and she was like, Amy, uh, I was wondering if you were going to go to Joanne's today. I said, Mom, I'm here. I'm sitting in front waiting for them to open. She was like, oh, can you get me um, web binding? And I was like, web binding? She's like, yeah. So, it's kind of like interfacing, but it's double-sided, and it's for patches and for t-shirts. 
So I got her six yards of that because it was $3.49 and it was 50% off. And she was just like, thank you, thank you. So I'm going to give that to her tomorrow. Um, also at checkout, I got another bag. I got another bag because I needed to get one for my mom for um, Easter. And that's my mom and my thing is socks and the holiday bags from Joann's because and Michael's Michael's I haven't been to Michael's I probably should have went to go see and wandered around the ranch market until they opened at nine and uh seen if they had any cool bags they generally I don't generally like Michael's bags I like Joanne's bags better especially the blue one that says rolling oh man because it has a yarn that's rolling so I had two of those. I think I'm going to go buy another one. The other one started breaking down and a customer was like, well, I bought this much. Can I at least have the bag that you brought it in? I was like, yeah, it's breaking anyways here. <laughs> I was like, you know, I'm not the kind of person that is just like, yeah, sure, go ahead. Okay, anyways, anyways, anyways. So I bought the yarn of the Bright Lights uh, the Bernay Chunky or the Bernay Blanket Extra. I bought another giant skein of that and I finished my peep. So I still have some left over. So I'm going to make an egg or maybe a Lady Froggy. I probably can make both because I have a lot left over. But I went and I got Bernay Blanket. This is called Perfect Phasing. Okay. I am going to make a peep out of this. I can't wait. I was going to buy, I was going to grab the black one and the purple one. And, but I was just like, Oh, I want this one. It looks okay. It's supposed to, it's called deep teal. So it's like a turquoise, like an ocean blue. I cannot wait to see what it looks like. The, the, the like fading from the dark to the light into the ears. Oh, Oh, you guys. And it's got just the right amount of yarn for one peep. 220 yards. Um, it's machine washable and dryable. Would you look at that? So I'm probably going to need more fiber fill because I'm going to be making a lot of amigurumi from here on out. And my daughter loved my giant peep so much. She was just like, mommy, it's so soft and squishy. Can you make me one for Easter? So I bought her, this is called Unicorn, I think, Unicorn Brights. So I bought her this and I cannot wait to make it. Why is it like that? It just wound differently. This is Unicorn Brights. So I bought her pink and purple and turquoise teal one. She is going to be so excited. So I'm going to be making that this week. Um, I'm gonna, I don't know how I'm gonna hide it from her because the, today's our last day of school before two weeks off, um, for Easter spring break. And my family is like, you guys get two weeks off. I said, yes, we had two weeks off the week before and the week after Easter, we get off. And they were just like, are you serious? They only get one week off. So I was like, <laughs> All right, you guys, are you ready for this? I don't think you're ready for this. I don't think you're ready for this, buddy. I don't think you're ready for this, bunny. I don't think you're ready for this. Because <laughs> my bunny's too bootylicious for you, babe. <gasps> you guys, I finished my big bunny. Okay, look. it's It looks neon yellow, but it's not. It's neon green, it's blue, and it's pink, and it's gray. Andrea? I was so, t so tempted to get like four more skeins of this so I can make one because this is going with me on the farmer's market. I'm selling this. So I'm going to take this with me to farmer's market. I'm going to sell for 45 as a giant peep bunny. I am. And my son was like, mommy, you should get the bigger, fat, thick yarn and make a pillow sized peep. And I was like, I'm going to do it. So I went today to go see if they had any of the neon green left. Zero. 
They only had one orange. They had tons of neon pink. They just didn't have the neon green bright extra. I was so upset. I was like the electric green or the electric boogaloo or whatever color it's called. But it's that neon Bernay extra bright green. It's my color. And they had gray. So I'm going to do a gray and green one because it's the color of my business. Gray and green. Oh, you guys. I normally don't usually like hug all of my stuff. But this is so soft. And I stuffed it with just the right amount of fluff. And my head hurts, so this feels so good. Okay, good night. <laughs> but I'm so excited. I cannot wait to get this out there tomorrow. See who is interested in purchasing my giant $45 peep. <laughs> Next up, I did make another giant peep. It is in here somewhere. Here it is. This bag's full of leggy froggies. Okay, but this one is sold already. I don't have the um, the the necktie on either one of these. It's just plain right now, but this one is sold. Z claimed it. And I decided, because I still had yarn left, I was going to make a leggy froggy out of the rest of it. Look at my giant leggy froggy. Now I want to make a giant leggy froggy, and I have just enough of the... Um, the neon brights, it's called neon brights, to make a leggy froggy, and it's thicker yarn than this, so I am just so stoked. Look at this. We're happy. Give me a high five. <laughs> this one is just, ah, I feel like this one is a little bit too wongo, though. Like, for me, I don't know. This one is $30. This one is probably going to be 15 I love this. Look at his lips, though. <laughs> they're so big. I mean, they're out there. Okay, so next, I did finish the purple peep. I finished a purple peep. And then I finished the green peep. So now I have to go grab the baskets from downstairs. And I need to put them in their perspective color basket. And these were going to go out there. They're not as soft and they're not as giant and fluffy as my giant peep but they are worth it so you're $25 normally oh man you guys I'm getting so tired okay so I made leggy froggies this week I made five green ones because Sophia had ordered three and I had only been able to get two done after selling the other ones and uh, so I told her after market tomorrow, I'm just going to swing by and drop off her froggy. And she had already paid for them. So I'm going to give Sophie her leggy froggy. So I decided that, you know what? I will make four of each color because that is about as much as the skein of yarn will give me is four, maybe five, four, maybe in a four and a half, maybe of leggy froggies. So I did green. I did pink and I did three purple before my eyes decided to just slam down and my battery powered off so <laughs> I still need to make let's see, I still need to make blue <clears throat> and yellow where's the yellow one okay, well I had yellow here and it's not here anymore but oh well so I still need to make blue and yellow and one more purple. And I could do that right now, like before the kids get out of school. So that is it. That's all that I had gotten done this week. And last night I started watching a, um, I started watching, um, what is that called? New York Crime. I can't, I don't know what it's called, but it's New York Crime. And they were talking about how, these New York, um, pre, this, these precinct, the 26th precinct, I think it wasn't in a, then in a different precinct. They are investigating, um, these horrendous, just crazy incidences where people are deceased and they have to go investigate what happened, uncover the truths and everything. So 
I was watching that last night. I was, um, there's only six episodes of the first season, I believe. And then I don't know what they're going to do after that, but I'm hoping that they continue it because it is so interesting to find out things that happen in different city states and different parts of the world. And I am a big, as you guys know, crime history, just all around, you know, thriller buff. I just love watching all those things. This morning, I got another craving for a donut. I stopped off again, but at a different donut shop, and I got a bear claw that had just apple goodness on the inside, and I ate it all the way home. It was so funny because I, I had to jump off my car and turn on the faucet on the side of the house and wash my hands because they're so full of glaze that I couldn't pick anything up. I couldn't touch anything because <laughs> I was just sitting there going on the way home. But uh, I still have one glass of chocolate milk left. I'm going to go drink that and I'm going to sit in front of the TV right now and just wait for the kids to get out in about an hour and a half. I have this to edit and then that is that today is going to be a long video. You guys, I hope if you made it this far, thank you for joining me today. You guys are amazing. You're wonderful. You're wonderful. You really are the heart of my business, of my channel, of just the encouragement to keep going for myself personally. So uh, thank you guys for joining me. Continue to keep me in prayer. I am still not feeling good. And I noticed that in my videos, I had some serious baggage under my eyes from lack of sleep. And last night, sorry, I have my low rider eyes on. I look so bad, <laughs> you guys, I look so bad. I was like telling my kids, please let me sleep, please let me sleep. But then my oldest came into the room, hey mom, I'm like, what? He's like, can I go downstairs to get water? I'm like, yes, why do you always ask me? Just go get it. Just make sure you turn the lights off after <laughs> because I can't sleep with lights on. I can't stand it. It just, it's something that irks me. I don't know why. And then again, my husband left to work or my, my daughter came into the bed after my husband went to work. She woke me up because she likes to snuggle in deep in my back. I wake up with back pain because she's just like in there. And she's done that since she was born. She loves to just be in every crook, nook and cranny. And so, and then I had to push her to her dad's side of the bed because he, <clears throat> excuse me, he was gone. And then my oldest, again, Isaiah walks in and he's just like, mom, hey, can I go make something to eat? I'm hungry. I'm like, it's 4.30 in the morning. Go lie down. And he tried to sneak his phone. I was like, oh, heck no. I was like, if you value your time with your phone today for the rest of the day, you will not take that phone with you. And he was like, oh, uh, I was just wondering if I can go get something to eat because I'm hungry. I was like, you little stinking fibber. <laughs> you were just telling me stories so you can get your phone, stinking kid. <laughs> what things do your kids tell you to try and get out of things? Oh, man. But that is it, you guys. Um, I'm going to go again, chill. I'm probably going to go get something to eat. It's almost 1230. I'm hungry. So you guys have a blessed rest of your Friday, a blessed rest of your week. And oh, look, it's fluffy stuff. <laughs> I will see you guys next time. Peace out.